on YouTube. I hope you guys are well. We are back with another video after the break from Texas. Um, today is a big day again. We have a double run day and a bigger swim, bigger long, all aerobic basically. So first run is gonna be a negative split two hour run with yeah 27K, somewhere around there. Then the sec second session is gonna be a 5K swim, aerobic mainly. And then the third session, oh wait, after the second session actually, we're gonna have a 30 minute gym. Also some changes there, cutting there in volume, time in the gym, but still getting it in twice a week, some lifts, but not pushing it main energy for swim, bike, run. And then the fourth session is gonna be a second run, 45 minutes, 10K, and they are mostly zone two running. Although Texas was a bit unlucky, so many changes, so many things I learned since then, which I would never have otherwise really on so many fronts from training perspective, from a tactical perspective. It's hard to put them all into one video, probably be a one hour video, but uh, also dealing with failure, kind of like that on a high level, let's say, because there's gonna be probably more like that coming next 10 years, because when you have a look at other pros, it's a lot of that happening very, very often. So you better get used to that because those kind of things will come. And yeah, stress-wise, it doesn't affect me so much that these things happened. Like there was maybe 10% of the stress that was caused a week after the race. It wasn't like the, the circumstance with the sickness and all that, that was a short one. But 90% of the stress was caused and we almost limit stress as like, as a negative thing, but stress can be something that drives you. For example, the night before an exam, uh, you shouldn't go, let's say, cope with stress like they say, hey, drink a chamomile tea and, and go for a walk and chill. Maybe that stress is trying to tell you something to kind of, okay, let's go, study, let's focus, those kind of things. And so it's not always bad, the stress, but 90% of the stress caused from the Texas trip was, I have to find this blueprint. So there I kind of, I was really challenged, like how do I create this blueprint? Because I do have to create something that doesn't exist yet, in a sense if I want to win Kona in a few years and also the timeline from that is going to be completely erased because it could be earlier, it could be later. That was kind of something with I yeah, fighting with the universe a little bit that I shouldn't have done the timeline that I'm going to win it on this day and success happens at this time. This is something that is wrong. Uh, success comes when it will come, but it will only come through stuff like today, putting the work in every single day and recovering well and doing it consistent. In my mornings, what I take always, I'm not sponsored, but a balance oil, that's basically omega oil. Centino Extend, that is basically just a bunch of vitamins, but healthy ones also has some other stuff in it that's causing off um, fighting sickness or like just flagging anything that's coming into the system. Electrolytes, simple stuff, and that's kind of new since the race, because it took me actually over a week, and my wife as well, and a sister as well, to get this whatever gut bacteria thing that came in us out. Uh, first I had these kind of things from the pharmacy, it's just strong gut bacteria for five days, and we felt really, old. only after one week I noticed that I should take them. So just gut bacteria from the pharmacy, and then I realized, oh my God, I feel so much better with these. And then I checked for them as well in the pharmacy, and anti-doping as well, of course that uh, yeah, just, just some gut bacteria that you can take every single day. Just from the pharmacy again, cost 20 bucks, low dose gut bacteria, but it can, of course, for a good gut bacteria in general, but also, you know, can help ward off anything coming into the system. So that's a small learning from there, from my routine. So from a training perspective, uh, especially with a swim, I've been in touch now with someone, uh, several World Cup open water swimmer uh, and a winner, world champ as well. He'll be helping me with my swim journey a bit more because there were some things in training that didn't translate to open water and now looking back are quite obvious. Some of them, for example, as you guys remember over the winter, I did a lot of focus of this anaerobic work basically, the 50s leaving on one minute and I could do 20 times 50 meters. 30, 31 seconds, 32, somewhere in there. And even the hundreds, I could do five times 100, leaving on two minutes in 105, 107, or long course meters, which is good, but it's anaerobic, right? And we still have an aerobic sport. So I have to become very good at threshold, which I did, but to a smaller amount. Just small mistakes like that, those from training perspective, and those mistakes just can happen, right? So I'm gonna have someone in my corner. Um, in general, building this blueprint, like I say, I have to create it but I'm not gonna create it myself, basically in a sense only, because I have to talk to people who are much better in certain areas than I am. For example, with him when it comes to swimming, he knows exactly everything there is to know about a high level swimming, open water especially. 
um, which will translate to pro level racing in triathlon. That and then also another guy had someone from another sport actually on purpose because I need someone that thinks outside the box and that person did. They got two gold, gold medals with a system and still hold two national records or like general records. So it's, it's not about the credentials from the guy, but of course they speak for something. But I had a talk with him, him as well and learning from him. So I'm taking in all this knowledge. I'm very open to learning as you guys maybe know. Although I'm safe co self coach and I have to build this on my own. I'm very, very open to learning, but I have to create something that doesn't exist. So I'll be downing my last coffee, then we're ready to go. Again, here's my training for the day. This is basically it. And uh, I light 26K in the first run and then 10 in the evening. Uh, so 36k in total, but mainly aerobic running training wise is something um, I have a lot of catching up to do is just being in a higher percentage of my LT1. That's kind of a uh, focus for this whole month now in uh, the biggest next race will be Ironman Spain in 10 weeks time. I look forward to uh, having a good crack at that and before that as well one or two races here locally just some Olympic distance races and especially I'll be looking for swim races as well just to you know get used to this open water dynamics swimming out hard seeing how the training is tracking yeah so that's basically it and um, off we go running We are in hour one, 10 minutes in. Just by feel, especially when you start runs, I really aim to date and all that out the window and really make sure that, you know, go by body feeling. Sometimes you have to go super slow when you feel structures are kind of sensitive and sore. So pace really doesn't matter until you warm up and go with the body. That's always something I try to do. And again, this air and auto set, I'm really bad, focused on numbers and always linked to expectations. Like, even with running, like, quick pace, okay, this results in this time and this time results in this possible ranking, this possible ranking, like, just bullshit, like, really bad, really bad on that front as well in training. Same with swim and all these things, always linked to an outcome. So that's a learning that I definitely had to not have that now so put the data another way but like have a different mindset towards it so you probably can understand as a triathlete it's a general athlete with so much data available it's easy to get confused but now I'm back on track for the journey not the outcome So now in the next 10 weeks, already last week had a different rhythm of things. Again, learning, adjusting. <laughs> Again, you can break the laws of endurance sports, right? So there are those things like volume, intensity, <coughs> aerobic, due to max, threshold, all those things, they all exist. You have to, of course, work within that realm. But how you put it together, especially as an individual for yourself, what is the most bang for buck for you at this point in time and how can you put it together in a monthly, weekly uh, scenario that you can maintain that workload which has to be eventually very high of course but high workload doesn't mean anything unless you can maintain it over long periods of time and I don't mean three months, six months, I mean one or two years straight and the only role models you can look at basically that did that are the Mark Allens out there, Craig Alexander as well, especially Mark Allens, 10 years straight, one knees, basically never injured. Also Miranda Carfrey running, I think 10 years never injured. And uh, yeah, so you gotta find something and I believe I again altered and learned and a small change, but I believe it's significant. So. But uh, Spain will tell, right? So, uh, um, not putting it on a pedestal like, this is the race, but I want to break through. And I feel like there's a possibility that 
Spain is now the one that can do that. But uh, yeah, a lot of work ahead. And again, one race uh, means nothing as you see with Texas. You can get a stomach back day before and then you hyped it up for no reasons. It's also just stepping stones along the way um, towards my journey and in my journey. And yeah, this all happens for a reason thing. It's something I believe in and I focus on even more now that this is all your journey and you just walk along it, do the best decisions you can and trust in your decisions. And yeah, that's what I'm doing. Oh, look at this. Finished course is really beautiful as you can see stones, rocks, endless paths like this. Now the weather's picking up 20 Celsius and there's more open water as well. The sea. I also got lakes with buoys. That's what I'm gonna be looking for, especially for uh, open water training. I need to work out some air so measure distances help. But uh, let's see. Right now I have a thing for my long run, so I kind of listen to this epic style music from 300 and stuff. I don't know, it gives you this, it's kind of orchestra basically. But it really helps me visualize and attract good things and visualize things that could happen to your life and the work paying off. Because it will pay off, it's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And I got that when wrong with the expectation, so. It will pay off at some day. I don't know when it is. It's not really my control, but my work every day and focus is in my control. So, all right, we are now one hour four minutes in, meaning I'm in the second part where I accelerate a little bit by effort and uh, heart rate. So now we're at 141, and that feels good for now. Might rise to 145. And uh, yeah, so it's good, but feeling, see how I'll go. And uh, keeping the legs turned over, pace, I don't look, but yeah, now right now it's 4.30, nothing crazy yet, but uh, I think I'm gonna be 4.30, 4.15, 4.10, 4.10, anywhere in there, so it's good. Well, this is kind of what I mean, with heart rate, so now I just reached, 130.45, which is my lower limit on zone 2. That's what I meant earlier with uh, having to condition myself aerobically to run at a higher percentage of my LT1. Because, one second, I just stop. Because, yeah, leg wise, I mean, on the bike it's easier, you can just push and get tired. On the run, of course, the orthopedic side and injury comes in, so you gotta. I can't just from zero to hero start running everything at 4-0 pace or 4-10, which is kind of where my heart rate would be. I mean, 155, that's kind of where it is, 4-0 pace uh, range. But uh, I shouldn't be training at LT1 all the time, of course, but just under, at a higher percentage has a lot of value for that. For me, we also saw it in a lap with uh, cardiac output and stuff. So I have to, that's kind of my journey right now in aerobic. Also on a bike and swim. Yeah, swim's a bit different because it doesn't just need aerobic. If you do a lot of aerobic in the water, it's not gonna help you at pro, pro level swimming. You need threshold and starts and all this. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of my journey. We are on the last meters until we hit 26K. This sign there and then I will walk and then I'm done. Let's finish this up. Almost, almost. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Was good. Could feel my legs working in the end. Rolling hills and 
yeah, good training last day, so happy with this. Now food, recovery, and then we're back at it. So it's afternoon now, 5.30 almost, 5.30 on the leave. We did almost everything, so we did um, the run earlier, as I said, then the swim, that was good actually. Really happy with this one, uh, 50 times 100 on 130, long course, all aerobic, so just short rests coming in all 20, 125 basically, 124, 25. And the last seven I could tell was getting more challenging. And uh, yeah, then the gym after, straight after as well. Uh, some good, good stuff there, full body basically. And now the last uh, zone two hilly run, and then there will be the day. Then it will just be a lot of eating left, and uh, some other stuff I'm gonna do. But yeah, so that was my day. Probably gonna be checking in the next days as well. So I'll make like long one, one long video, and uh, yeah, let's bang this run out, and then I'm done for today. Good morning, good morning. It's, uh, we're heading towards the end of the training block. So fatigue is definitely building up, which is normal. But uh, yeah, today a 7K swim with some quality in there. So broken 1,500 uh, into 500. So like the main set <laughs> is the first 500. I'm gonna do uh, leaving on 45. I did last week 40, but the rest is too short and the time's a bit too slow. So I did leaving on 45. So trying to do best average. Then some break, then again. Second 500 is gonna be five times 100, leaving on 130. So they had a threshold range. I hope this 140 and 15, that I can do that. And just lock that one in. And then the last one is gonna be 500 for time. So threshold, leaving on 730 uh, as well. So uh, just a little bit of a muscle work before I leave, just for the arms and in general. Um, yeah, feel, feel good for sure. But I needed two big cups of coffee to get the ball rolling. And uh, yeah, have some new habits, some morning routines that I do, they feel really good. And it's a beautiful day. Gonna be heading out for a bike ride later as well. Uh, three hour aerobic ride. Gonna do that one on the road bike. Already did one TT bike uh, four hours earlier this week with a runoff. But now on the road bike and uh, they have no watts. And the other day I kind of bonked pretty hard after the two hour mark. I thought, why did I bonk? Because the hardware was kind of okay. It was not like crazy high or anything but I definitely blasted the first two hours. So uh, yeah, just a bit too much pressure on the legs, but uh, not really, I adapted through it this week. I was a lot fitter, so it's, it's good. It's all good and fun, three hours. Gonna stop for a coffee ride as well, then a little break and then another aerobic run, one hour, 13K. And then I have only one day left, which is tomorrow. And then I have a little uh, break and absorb the load. So first, work a bit on my arms, get those a uh, bit of blood flow going and then we head to the swim. Can't film unfortunately, but uh, I do what I can to keep you in the loop. Probably check in after. All right, <clears throat> just a quick check in after the swim. Gotta get this down. Really happy with this one, actually, Surprised energy was so good, but mostly I feel good after those longer aerobic sets like yesterday the 5k That really helps with my stroke and last night. I was pretty hungry Now I can trust my appetite again after those all those years of low carb I fat that really messed it up But now it's all back to normal super happy with that. I can just trust my body and my diet and um, so when I'm hungry I eat more and otherwise just uh, go with the flow and so I had a big old omelette with some salami, a bit of cream, like a bit of a calorie bomb last night. And that I think was really, really good because the swim now, the energy was good. Better than last week when I did this 7K set the first time. And really happy with uh, yeah, how I did it, how I felt, especially working on those threshold paces. That's something uh, I struggle with, like kind of, with, uh, kind of where I have to develop. Um, so really good, the 10 times 50s at 45, I did them like 34, mostly 35 seconds, just like nothing insane, but you know, aerobic, uh, high aerobic or this threshold feel. Then the five times 100, there I kind of noticed I really have to learn the pacing. There's something I really probably do the same in racing. <clears throat> the pacing has to be way better. Also one tip from the, uh, 
the coach I talked to with the swim <clears throat> to kind of, you know, if you do threshold sets, you start a bit slower. For example, let's say your threshold like minus 115 long course. Um, if it's that, for example, then you should start more like 118 and build towards the end, like always build in the sets. So I did the other way around today. For example, the, the worst first 115, 114, then I got a bit tired, 117 or stroke. It's always the thing, but uh, somewhere in there <clears throat> and then the 500 timed as well. Um, yeah, there I was playing with, with the pace, um, but yeah, I don't know, 650 or something. I got nothing insane. Last week was 647. Not at all, but like a timed good uh, threshold effort and um, something like that. And nothing crazy, crazy, but good work and happy I did it. Now I gotta get this in and then oh, my brain doesn't work. I gotta eat now. All right, one comatose nap later, I'm back. Uh, one hour nap, 30 minutes, one hour, something like that. Uh, my lights, front and back, LED, really important to be seen on the road. Bike computer, pump, helmet, again, with some LEDs, my helmet, uh, sunglasses, and then what I will also have, here are my drinks and my beautiful, look at this, Texas bottle. Loved everything about the Texas, definitely back next year. Um, some fats actually, some nuts, I'm uh, trying that now with like aerobic rides um, when intensity is kind of like zone 2, work a bit with healthy fats but for sure still carbs of course and uh, yeah so that will be my nutrition, two bottles only, it's a 3 hour aerobic ride and it's still quite warm outside, hot so gonna be stopping probably somewhere for another bottle because my road bike only has two slots for bottles so yeah so the sun lotion is already on uh yeah really important with skincare that i take care of that uh, because if you're outdoors a lot i think uh, your skin just ages differently i learned that from the fins to take care a bit of that because i didn't know about that so much like most men uh, skincare a little bit you know making sure before you go to bed put some stuff for dryness and all this stuff but uh, yeah so I got that because it's actually a pretty sunny hot day it's gonna be a three hour ride aerobic I'm gonna take you with with this bad boy <laughs> and uh, yeah still quite a bit of pressure on the legs with that one like I said no power meter on the road bike but uh, going after feeling and heart rate as well but heart rate is mostly not the thing that's you know jumping super high or anything like that so um, yeah, but some good pressure on the legs. A little bit less than I did last time because they are really drilled it, I guess. I, I kept it solid, it's a solid ride. Solid is a good word for that, this aerobics, because it's not easy, but uh, yeah, you, you keep some pressure on the legs, on the heels. If on the heels, the heart rate or the effort is going a bit higher, which is also okay because you have the downs. I'm gonna be having a hilly loop, so uh, kind of some rolling hills, which will be nice and uh, yeah, works as well for for leg strength as well and then a little break and then uh, when I'm gonna have my shake I can show you which one I do there uh, really nice for energy and um, also for yeah digestion and then the run and then we did the second last day just finishing my uh, with Komoot the session just to do some new loops uh, really nice I like this one uh, yeah a nice loop three hours 92k it's a bit rough roads here so not like Texas it's a bit up and down here but really nice interesting so a nice little loop as you can see I like loops out and back as uh, yeah for TT maybe but otherwise boring so um, yeah there down on GPX boom Man, this pump is so over with. It must be the worst pump on planet Earth. I basically have to jump on there between five and six bars. Holy cow, it's always a workout. But tires are pumped, lights are on, boot is loaded. Uh, one thing I also did is to really focus on all the essentials. So for example, things like social media. I was never a lot 
on Instagram. Nah, it's not true. Recently I did a lot like sharing the journey and, and the stories and all that. It's just a lot of mental energy. You have to really decide what do you want to do in life. Let's say whatever your goal is. And then you should focus a lot on that. And there's so many distractions these days with the internet. YouTube is something I'm really passionate about because I think it's really nice to, to share this whole thing. And uh, I noticed, for example, one thing that me really made me want to come back to YouTube is actually, for example, there I saw the perspective of your side because, I, of course, you're, you're in it, you see your perspective and you kind of then, at some point I got, yeah, after text, especially when it went, went bad, you get a bit like oh, frustrated about sharing everything because it's, yeah, I don't know, challenging enough without sharing with everybody. But uh, the, what turned it around for me mentally a lot was, for example, seeing Gustav, Gustav Eden, you know, he had a really tough stretch one and a half years now after his Kona win, uh, yeah, injury and all this stuff. And now he had a race in Mallorca and I don't know exactly what happened, but anyways, he couldn't finish and something happened obviously. And yeah, I'm sure he's in a tough spot right now. And I noticed I'm way more interested in hearing what his story is now, how he deals with these struggles, not just because it happened, I think just as a, as a fan or just something objective as well. I was like, all oh, right, I see this is way more interesting than for example, I mean, it's great if the one guy wins, but like it's, it's, it's not as interesting. I can see now how as a, entertaining perspective but also objectively because you know someone like Gustav and yeah also like me I'm not gonna quit so it's, it's not a question of when when things go right um, not of if but when as I said before but with him as well if he just keeps showing up obviously there's all the potential in the world to to be great again but uh, yeah that made motivated me to to share this whole thing again but let's get going and uh, that's all right Really perfect weather, love it. It's really nice and warm. 25 Celsius, whatever this is, 65, 70s, and uh, beautiful, yeah. Here I normally turn for my time trialing. There's quite a bit of this around, like beautiful time trialing. It's also something I'll do for my key sessions for Ironman Spain in nine, ten weeks' time. Is uh, yeah, on the train that's one thing with the power, but uh, it's good for muscles and stuff, of course, and the system. But um, outdoor riding, as I of course learned from Ocean Side, uh, is just very different, right? So the time trialing you need to be good at at race pace. Especially in the pro field is you're gonna be riding the hills at threshold and then with lower power so it's like a highest speed obviously right so although it's a flat-ish course it's still gonna be of course some uh, annotations so that will be coming up as well and one thing I was just thinking of the swim is something I'm really passionate about especially because I don't come from a swim background I want to really yeah I'm a hard worker, so I enjoy hard work, so kind of figuring out this puzzle. For example, the front pack you saw this now in Texas is that, yeah, all of those guys, their aerobic pace and long course pool is around 115, and that's kind of what they do in the race. So when they set out hard, I mean, the first 50s, they kind of go into gear to max, but then they go into threshold, which for them is kind of this 108 pace, 110, without wetsuit and all this. So uh, right now, my aerobic pace, for example, long course pool, as we saw yesterday, 50 times 100 leaving on 130 is 125 that's kind of my aerobic pace at this point and this I need to get down to 115 that I can do you know 50 times 100 60 times 100 leaving on 120 coming in 115 and that is your aerobic pace right so that's kind of where I need to get to to consistently be in the front pack until then you know sometimes they kind of sneak their way into the front pack with a quick start and if the Summers are not full on the gas, you can kind of sneak your way into that with a good start and threshold and then maybe hang on. But of course, uh, 
swimmers that have this 115 aerobic threshold they don't want that so they're gonna work hard in the beginning to uh, like they did and now in the pro series which is super awesome in Oceanside and Texas as you see all watching it was super spread out like a super long line they were just on the gas super cool so super motivating for me to keep working and uh, putting the puzzle pieces together in the pool as well and uh, yeah loving my journey I gotta do a quick refill here a uh, mistake I did uh, last week that was a bit too dehydrated you can kind of see it yeah and also feel it when you get a bit fuzzy so get some water and then uh, we got another one here so yeah quick refill all filled up normally you always get some food here but not today feeling good and ate well and everything so just a three hour ride but this is my local gas stop it's normally like 50 minutes one hour out but it's a good good stop on the train i started watching some old tour de france videos and one of them was up to his up to her like the climb and armstrong pantani did it sure doped over the years but but still super cool to watch and uh, yeah armstrong did back then he was 75 kilos he was never considered a climber and they said then that he started working instead of this torque pressure thing which i guess he is a bigger cyclist as well uh, he changed it to a cadence approach so really interesting um, and then yeah he yanked out 495 watts 6.7 watts per kilogram for 36 minutes in the race <laughs> that's just absolute next level but uh, yeah so cadence eh? and uh, juice don't put juice just listening to the podcast with uh, Courtney Dodwater the trail running champ with uh, Joe Rogan, you should listen to it from 217, really good. And that just makes me think of something also, one of my learnings, for example. I mean, by nature, as you guys notice, I'm, a, I'm an overthinker, or you can also call it a deep thinker. And there's pros and cons to that, for sure. Uh, a pro is, of course, being a deep thinker. I mean, you can't lie to an overthinker, you will always figure it out eventually. And like a lot of things in my life, yeah, because I think very deep, I, I figured out a lot of stuff that helped me. And it's good but there's a time and place for that for example right now for this phase i even got into the habit like analyzing you probably saw it in the videos before analyzing right after the session or like analyzing because you have so much data available as a triathlete right like and like even started to analyze during the session okay i had this split and this and this this means this and that's just not helping right so there's a time and place for that and that's always at the end of the week i sit down uh, with my wife and uh, we go through all the data and go through all the things objectively and then make decisions based on that and before that you know no excuses execute to the best of your ability make the best possible choices uh, and don't think let's say that's really a simple one the reason i thought out because Courtney doubt water they talked about it hey, what's your diet like uh, nachos beer candy and it's also something i observed now basically with being around other pros and all this stuff that basically <laughs> I'm looking for some some secret nugget but basically it's really simple do a lot of hard work consistently and uh, even there's a lot of messing up involved and all that but like yeah that that's the main part kind of where I can now decide okay here switch off now these coming weeks it's execution time and get down to work then race see evaluate get back to work and kind of do this type of rhythm so that was a good one of the learnings. We're shifting, decided to give up a while ago, so I'm in one gear. And I'm hungry. Nom nom nom. I have about 15k left. Something I got. And then I'm gonna eat. Alright, made it home, 
a bit hungry now. Oh, light off. Last about three, four hours this light. It's really good. One other thought that also came to me, for example, and I asked, uh, it's something I saw myself in as well. And probably most athletes, if you're really honest to yourself, <laughs> you will have that. It's just the ego, the resistance that's trying to beat us and trying to, you know, we have this part of us in us that doesn't want us to change and that's normal and a lot of people listen to this voice and it's kind of a comfort zone and they stay in their box and never change which is okay that's what most people of their life but a lot of people that challenge themselves and probably you as well if you're watching it uh, when you do triathlon it's three sports it's an incredible challenge just to do it so what something that I for example heard from the podcast that she said if some the Courtney Dotwater, the trail runner, if she would get beaten, for example, she would just think, ah, I gotta train harder, I gotta train more. That was her thought process. And that would is kind of a a good one, I would say, for example, what other people think, and I also did in the past. For example, hey, you, you don't do as well as you, you think you do, or the race doesn't show what you did. And what do you look for? You look for the small things. You look for, for example, low carb, high fat. I looked for that instead of just saying because until a certain point the first four or five years in the sport every goal I set out achieved qualified for Kona here and there better Ironman each year first 11 hours and 10 30 then 10 then under 10 9 30 and so far and so far further but you look for those small things who are easy right changing a diet is a lot easier than training harder or for example doing drills in the pool is sexy and there's a place for that but let's say if you're swimming two or three times a week okay, well you better have a really small percentage of drills because that's not going to be the one that makes you faster per se swimming is and uh, and you might say oh, i only got two k's per sessions man there are sessions that are really really challenging and going to make you better but are mentally taxing that are just 2k long for example you could do the same one i did you could do 20 times or 30 times 100 and let's say your aerobic pace is two minutes per hundred and you leave, leave at 205 meaning two minutes you come in 205 boom time to go that's mentally challenging and if your goal is performance and getting better in the sport which a lot of people say but actually when it comes to the day to day day to day sessions they don't apply it so yeah that's why it's good to have people in your corner that Find those blind spots because we all have our comfort zone, no matter how dedicated you say you are and how hard you say you train, all this big boy talk. Everybody has a soft voice in them and me, me too. Everybody has it, the biggest world champion as well. And if you had an environment around you that for example, you have no choice but to do it or you seek out those challenges. For example, now in the swim, I knew for example, and there were just some things I didn't do 100% right in training as well, 100% and that showed as well in racing. And uh, yeah, you gotta learn from that, that's my journey. And uh, start working now with someone that will help me with that front. And yeah, this swim set's gonna be grueling, right? If you say, ah, like I said earlier, I wanna have the 115 aerobic threshold. Yeah, that's gonna be a ridiculous amount of work of weekly swimming, of highly mental focused swimming as well. And it's gonna be challenging, there's a reason why a lot of people don't make it from second pack to front pack because you got a lot of work ahead, a lot of work. And I know it, but uh, you got to get in those sessions weekly and that is mentally challenging. And in order to have this, you know, pump out this mental fortitude, because it's not just physical, it's mainly mental, more than physical, to do this day in day out, you need to have a nice balance. And that's something I kind of worked on. Balance is a big, big word and like if you're, if you're really driven, but still you need to find ways to kind of get out of your head and get out of your zone. And there I got so much better and completely switch off with things, have other small little hobbies and things I do outside of sport because I know if I just, you know, I'll burn through my passion basically if I just go always triathlon, triathlon. Some people do, but I don't know how, how to do it. It's not healthy, it's not gonna help you perform better either if you just do try it on try it on all time because it is a massive passion of, of ours that's why you're watching this channel but you have to if you have big goals you have to learn to switch it off for example Daniela Reef, none of her friends are triathletes she said when she's done with training she doesn't want anything to do with training and I know I know what she means so it is really this 
it's so consuming, such a consuming part of your life. Not because of this pro thing, even if you're an age grouper, it's such a burning, strong passion, which is amazing. But we also gotta hold on to this passion and protect the passion from, from ourselves almost. That we say, okay, in order for me to do this for a long time, which is the only way to be good in anything, especially endurance sports, if you do it for a long time, you gotta have passion for a long time, joy, because no grit and motivation and discipline, all this tough talk is not gonna get you through it through time. You gotta love it. And I do. So I just bombed all kinds of stuff in here. There's oats in here. I normally have at least one banana, sometimes two. Now I had some frozen berry stuff. Those work, there's some smoothie stuff, but sometimes with frozen berries, you know, I think they need to be sometimes cooked. Sometimes I got sick, but with this, I think it's fine. It's not the whole. I had this both frozen berry package and I think that needs to be cooked. That's not good for the gut per se. At least it didn't figure it to me. So this is gonna be the one for now and for sure a lot of food later as well. Yeah. Seven o'clock now, last session. I had the shake and also two breads with a bit of Nutella, just easy energy and uh, yeah. Gonna get the last run in, for sure tired now, but uh, all good. Just gotta stay focused, keep enjoying it. But uh, the aerobic runs are still quite a bit of effort, you know, you still have to, you know, work it. It's not like easy running, but normally after 20, 30 minutes, it's kind of coming around. But the beginning is just a bit, a bit, a bit more challenging and nice and sunny out. So 13k and then I'm done for the day. I already have some rice waiting and some minced meat and veggies for sure now and calories and tomorrow we do it again. So that was it, you followed kind of two days along. Uh, it's a bit different content than usually, but yeah, it's all about training still, what I did before. So uh, if you enjoyed this type of content, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Hit the sub button if you like this type of stuff. There's lots more coming about my pro journey. Um, yeah, this, this year, lots more videos from all the races and everything I'm gonna do. Keep you in the loop as much as possible. Training, my progress, and what it leads to in in racing and then also result wise and then end thanks for following and i'll see you in the next video bye